Good morning. These open, opening words are adapted from Laura Vogel. We gather here in observation of Indigenous Peoples Day to remember the earth is our home, but not just ours. We live, <clears throat> the land we live on, the water we drink, the air we breathe, the old mountains that hold us steady on it, to our ground, the forests that give us their healing green, the flowers that give us their beauty and fragrance, the fields and prairies that give us our daily bread, the stars that show us our place, the wilderness and the tame backyards, all of it, our home. We remember the ancestors who lived on the land and who shaped it. We inherit their choices. We honor the animals and creatures that have made their home on this land. The ones here now, the ones that used to be here. We envision the future generations who will live on this land and let our voices, their voices fill our hearts. We gather here to remember this is our home, but not just ours. We gather in humility and solidarity, in solidarity, in awe and in honor. We gather to worship and to recenter ourselves in relationship with all nature. Say that we are they're free. If you put oil in the water, we won't sit quietly. And they were singing, stand up, stand up for what's right. Don't walk, don't walk silently to the night. Take my hand and wear sickness through. To fight for me, I'll fight for you. want and say you come in peace if you don't open your eyes how can you see and we were cheering stand up stand Judy Kling, and I am co-chair of our worship committee and a proud member of the founding group of the Unitarian Universalists of Central Delaware. We welcome you and all of who you are to this worship service. We are so very glad you are here. We continue to be grateful for the technology that allows us to continue to meet during these times of social and physical distancing. Thank you for your patience and grace when we have technical glitches or delays. Consider them, if you will, invitations to take a deep breath. In addition to our worship each Sunday at 10 a.m., 
we meet on Tuesday nights at 7 p.m. for a more informal time of check-in and sharing. Please consider joining us for that gathering. And for all of our connections, we encourage you to invite a friend to join and get to know our UUCD community. There's certainly room in our hearts and our space for more people who are searching for a liberal, diverse, non-judgmental, spiritual community. As mentioned, we are observing Indigenous Peoples Day, which officially takes place tomorrow. This is a celebration of the history and cultures of Native Indigenous people. And we are so very pleased this morning to welcome Reverend Elder Diane Fisher as our guest minister. In her childhood, Reverend Fisher lived on a Cree Nation reserve in the far north of Canada, where her life and spirituality were formed and influenced by her own and many other grandmothers. She has been an ordained minister in the Metropolitan Community Church for over 25 years and has served as a local church pastor, denominational executive, and a human rights activist in countries around the world. Her favorite official title was bestowed on her by the Romanian press, which called her the Bishop of Lesbians. She is most proud of the fact that she is the mother of an amazing daughter, Carly. Diane is also the wife of our own minister, Reverend Dr. Karma Amos. Now I invite you to take a deep breath and listen to these sincere words of welcome. Whoever you are, whomever you love, wherever you've been, whatever you've done, whatever your religious beliefs are or aren't, and wherever you physically are on the planet right now, you are welcome in this spiritual community. However you move in this world, how much or how little is in your bank account or wallet, however you are feeling at this moment, you and all of who you are are welcome in this spiritual community. We are all enhanced by being together. The Chalice Lighting was written by Eric Williams. In the beginning, there was light, infinite and expansive, flowing from an unseen center. Throughout creation, there is light, from the steady sun, the glowing moon, the flashing meteor, the twinkling stars, and the auroras dancing in the northern skies. Within each part of creation, there is light, slowed down and held close, by every cell and molecule, by each atom and element. Within you, there is light, the same light as the source, the same radiance that is in all creatures. May this small flame be a constant reminder to you of your true nature and your kinship with all beings. Please join me in our unison affirmation. Words are in the chat box. Love is the spirit of this church and service its law. This is our great covenant, to dwell together in peace, to seek the truth in love and to help one another. Our opening video song is Mother Earth, Beloved Garden from our teal hymn hymnal. Amen. 
Story for All Ages is a book titled Sharing Our World, Animals of the Native Northwest Coast. When I previewed this video, it looked familiar to me. I was very pleasantly surprised to find out that I had purchased this book for our granddaughter, Penny Kling, last year while we were visiting Port Towns in Washington which is originally the home to five different Native American tribes. We hope you enjoy this video. Sharing our world, animals of the Native Northwest Coast. Our ancestors lived in harmony with the wildlife that surrounded them. Each animal was honored for its gifts and special qualities. Carved from cedar totems tell stories of our people's relationships to animals. The thunderbird is, a, is so huge it creates thunder when it flaps its wings. The wolf is a great hunter and, provi and a provider and protector. Frogs are held in high esteem by many nations along the coast. They can live on land and water teaching us to adapt to different situations. Owls are able to see clearly in the dark and are considered to be sightful and wise. Raven, Raven is the trickster, bringing the moon, sun, and stars to the world. The raven teaches us to be clever and creative. An eagle flying overhead represents good luck. If you have ever seen an eagle up close, you, you would understand why this majestic bird is so well respected and honored. Turtles teach us to have patience and think before we talk and to plan before we act. Hummingbirds provide us with the gift of friendship. They represent good fortune and peace. 
The butterfly, a thought small and fragile, is an important symbol of change within ourselves and the world. An octopus has the flexibility to adjust to its surroundings, inspiring us to adapt to different situations when we find ourselves. As people of the coast, we are deeply connected to the spirit of the whale. The song of the whale is considered by some to be the voices of our ancestors. Thanks for watching. Bye! It is now time for joys and concerns. We offer one another the opportunity to share very briefly what is most in our hearts right now. Life celebrations and concerns. As you do so, we invite you to light a candle in your own space. Through the action of sharing and kindling a flame, we give energy to our best thoughts, meditations, sympathies, celebrations, and prayers. We hold these sacred in our collective hearts. At this time, we invite you to change your view to gallery view in the upper right hand corner of your screen so that you can see everyone who is here. As you feel led, please unmute your microphone and share your joy of concern and light your candle if you have one. You can watch the mute signals on the lower left of each person's video stream to see if anyone else is unmuted. It's best if we share one at a time. Please mute your mic after you've shared. Okay, we will light one final candle for the joys and concerns that were not spoken by those of us here and in solidarity with others in our community who could not be with us today. A central part of our worship in person and online is the opportunity we have to practice the art of generosity. Our gifts to UUCD are what allow this congregation to thrive with a common vision to nurture our spirit, build community, and change the world. We are grateful to you for the many ways you support our community, including your financial pledges and offerings. Your gifts truly translate into lives changed. Every part of our ministry, from the worship that grounds us in our values, to the community gatherings that connect us, to our children's education, to our social justice outreach and actions, are supported by your gifts. We are entering this new church year with gratitude for the ways we have stayed connected this past year, with enthusiasm for new opportunities to live our mission, and with great hope that we will find innovative ways to work and worship together in the coming year. Your giving makes all of these things possible. For those who are making pledges or want to contribute to this community, you may continue to write checks and mail them to us, or you can give online. There are instructions to do both of these things on our website at uucd.org. Just check Support UUCD on the menu bar or click the Donate button on any page. You can do that now, during this offering song, or at any time that's convenient. It's such a pleasure to be here today, and we'll just move now into our centering moment. Native American poet Paula Gunn Allen wrote that there is an enormous difference between the way Western people approach the use of language and the way tribal people approach it. Tribal people say the words are sacred. We don't mean that you're supposed to bow down and worship them. We mean that you should be, you should in your being recognize that when you speak, your utterance has consequences, inwardly and outwardly, and that you are accountable for those consequences. You can't just say anything that comes to your head and then get distressed of another person acts on it. 
Now that other person may have misunderstood you, which means they have a responsibility to find ex out exactly what you mean <clears throat> before they act. But the principle is still there. Without linguistic honor, there can be no community, there can be no ethic, there can be no love, there can be no creative wisdom, <clears throat> and no created vision, and there can be no peace, and there can be no relationship. For our centering this morning, we invite you to breathe deeply and remember your most cherished relationships with those who came before you. Remember the grandmothers, grandfathers, the elders in your own family and broader community. Remember the more ancient ancestors about whom we've only heard stories. Recall and consider their words of wisdom, spoken and silently demonstrated their love, their courage, their resilience, their struggles, their transformations, their insights. Hold those memories as gifts. Honor their sacredness. And as you are willing and able, give thanks. This is the reading of Blind Justice, a poem by Louise Bernice, half sky dancer in the anthology Resisting Canada. The mountains rise behind my ancestors and disappear in the sail of them, orchestrated by a department that seeks their vanquishment $25 becomes millions in the blink of an eye. $25 becomes hunger in the next blink, becomes inadequate in the next blink, becomes the murder of cedars, sea vegetables, ausk, whale, and sockeye. As I struggle to mature without food, I am sorry too, Mr. Harper. Sustained violence, we could have recovered from smallpox. We had X-ray. We had X-ray. We had medicine. We had healing songs and dances, but they were banned. Violation. We could have recovered. We had friends, Christian friends, but they too were banned. My relations were banned from speaking, organizing, or fighting for land rights, fishing rights. The right to sing and dance, to raise our children, to educate them. We could have included you in our community, in our ceremony. 
of facing ourselves, recovering ourselves, transforming ourselves. But our ceremonies were banned. Still, I am not tragic, not even in my addicted moments, a needle hanging from the vein of my creased arm. I was not tragic, even as I jump from a boat in a vain attempt to join my ancestors, I am not tragic. Even in my disconnection from song, from dance, I am not tragic. Even in seeing you as privileged, as an occupier of my homeland, in my homeless state, even as men's abduct as I hitchhike along these new highways to disappear along this lonely colonial road, I refuse to be tragic. My body has always understood justice. Everyone eats, so we included you. There is no word for exclusion, so your whiteness is no threat. We have lived for 11,000 years on this coastline. This is not the first massive death we have endured. We girded up our loans, loins, recovered and rebuilt. We are builders, we are singers, we are dancers, we are speakers. We are still singing. We are dancing again, we are speaking in poetry, in story, in film. In the millennia that we have lived here, there are constants. The tide will retreat and it will return. The fishes that are threatened will return. The people who died during those epidemics are returning. The plants, the trees, the animal world will recover. It may take another tsunami of the sort that nearly killed us all. It may take an earthquake or storms, but the earth, the waters, the skies, the plants, the animals will return. I am a witness. I am inspired by the Earth's response to her desecration. A tsunami cleanses the Earth, a hurricane rearranges rivers, an earthquake is an objection, and we will have to face ourselves, face our sense of justice to include all life. We will need to nourish our imagination to include a new equality, a summon, and summon our souls, our heart, and our minds to a justice which includes all life. Awanestica. It is indeed good to be here with you today and to be able to share some of my background with you. I may not look the way you think I should look, but it's because I'm a hybrid, as most of us are. Most of us have more than one thing running through our veins, and we choose to identify where we identify. And this is a part of my history that I am blessed by. I just said awanestica at the end of the poem. And awanestica means all my relations. It means all those people who've gone before us, those who are with us now, and those who will come after us. It's kind of an amazing thing when we think about how long people have been here. We think of the history of this area as, you know, how long has the U.S. been here? Oh, two, three hundred years. How long has Canada been here? Oh, 150 years they celebrated last year. And you think, but we're visitors. We're immigrants if we came from somewhere else here. The first people have been here since people arrived. Part of what we look at is how do we name 
people. And I know that this is Indigenous uh, People's Sunday because it was at one point Columbus, one of the uh, people that are referred to by some as an invader. Uh, and we talk about uh, Indigenous people. And so I wanted to take a look at three different words that are used. Um, there's Aboriginal, Indigenous, and Native. And uh, so uh, Aboriginal people are inhabiting or existing in a land from the earliest times or from before the arrival of colonists. Indigenous people are originating or occurring naturally in a particular place. Native uh, says they're of Indigenous people of a place. So what describes the background of my people better would be Aboriginal people uh, because they've been inhabited and existing in this place, uh, in this land from the earliest times. Somehow, in the midst of all that went on, people got confused and started to call us Indians, and uh, that was mostly um, one name, also savages. Um, and what we chose to call ourselves was never considered. Who we were wasn't allowed to be said or honored, but it was taken away. Languages were taken away. We were punished if we spoke other languages or celebrated the earth in any way. In Canada, we've chosen to call ourselves First Peoples. And those people who are uh, First Nations people are the people that you would identify here as Native American. Um, and then we've got First People in the North. Uh, as well, who come from a different um, background. When we lump people together, uh, we do a disservice. In Canada, we have many different nations and tribes. Uh, I'm trying to think of the language you would use here. So we, we would say we've got many different nations, and here you would say you've got many different tribes, I believe. And I, in those nations, there are many different groups. And there's many different languages and cultures. And so cultural context makes a big difference. So for me, I'm from the far north of Canada. Uh, there are no roads, none. 232 people, not a lot. Things came in in the winter uh, because you could have ice roads then, which was convenient because most of the year was winter. And so it didn't need to worry too much. We had more words for snow than for anything else, more different kinds of snowstorms and things than anything else. Part of growing up in that kind of uh, place means that you are heavily influenced by the people around you and by the land. What was there and how to live in harmony with it. And that was always the way that you lived in harmony. You gave thanks for everything and you dealt with everything with respect. So if you were cutting a tree, you asked, you thanked, and you left something of yourself in return. If you were fishing and you caught a fish and you were going to eat that fish, you would give thanks to the fish for its life. You wasted nothing, even though some things you would really like to have wasted. Um, Bear no soup, not a big delicacy, but still, bear no soup you had. Uh, 
our area had a lot of night, a lot more night than many places, not a lot of daylight. You would have a couple of hours of daylight um, in the winter. And this was the time when the grandmothers would come together to do teaching and would teach uh, in what was called the winter longhouse. Now, it was made of wood, but if you can imagine, instead of log houses that you're used to seeing straight up and down. Uh, and so the, the, it was very tall and straight up and down. And there would be fire pits in different areas. And then there was bunks on the sides. Um, and you would gather around uh, a fire to be taught. And it wasn't that there wasn't other options. This was just traditional and it's the way the grandmothers taught. They were used to teaching in that way. And so they did. They, they taught uh, you when you were a youngster. And I've shared with people in other places that my grandmother taught me this story about a field mouse. And you had to learn the lesson from the story. Like, what can you learn from the story of the field mouse? And until you got it right, you heard the same story. And you kept hearing the same story. I grew to hate that mouse because I heard the story so often. Now, a lot of things have happened um, to people. Uh, that reserve. Uh, we call them reserves, not reservations in Canada. These are the longest existing um, internment camps. The reservations that we talk about, they're internment camps. People were forced, moved there, and are still there. They've never gotten their land back or any acknowledgement that their land was taken. So rever reserves are our internment camps. So people were um, on, reser uh, on reserves were uh, often taken off them. Children were taken off the reserve, moved, forced to go to school somewhere else away from their family. Sometimes they would come in and they would take those children, take them to go to school, and those children never came back. They were adopted by somebody in America. Um, our reserve is no longer exists. I just want to let you know, it no longer exists. It was flooded um, to become a power, uh, a power dam. And so where we lived with, is now uh, a lake, a big lake. It just expanded and expanded. And, um, and the people, because there were so few, were dispersed and put in different places and it destroyed that community. Um, so you were taken away when you were young and sent to community schools. I was not. When I got to school age, I went home uh, to where my parents lived. I had been, uh, and I went to, to regular school. I did not have that experience, but my grandmother did. She was taken away. She was punished for speaking uh, her own language. She was punished if she tried to celebrate um, and honor uh, her ancestors or her culture in any way. They were beaten, uh, thrown in camps. Their clothes were taken away. Uh, many were uh, physically and sexually abused um, in these places where they were taken to go to school. In all of that, holding on to who you are becomes next to impossible. And so many cultures are dying, languages are dying, and um, and people have lost the center of their lives. Uh, 
that the same things are happening here, that it's, it's difficult. Now in Canada, the government has started to make reparations, uh, give some of the land back, generally land still that nobody else wants. Uh, the uh, Inuit people in the far north have been given back uh, 25,000 square miles of land in the um, in Nunavut, and uh, I think it's 25,000. I could be 25. I could be off by something, um, but there's not many people there, and that land was given to them, but it is frozen all the time, and they do know that. It, that's their place, that's where they live, and that's what they know. So, uh, back to what I was talking to. There are things that, I may I make this all sound fairly um, bleak, uh, and it's not all bleak. Um, growing up in a place where you get taught to honor the earth, to see the earth and see uh, around the earth and hold on to the earth as sacred and all those things around it um, gives you an appreciation and a reverence that you can't walk away from. It becomes a part of your, your very being. So I chose to have the moon behind me uh, because we learned when we were growing, the first thing you do is you greet grandfather's son, and the last thing you do is say goodnight to grandmother moon. And so these kinds of things really give you uh, an appreciation for honoring the earth and not abusing the earth. Well, some of my favorite memories, my favorite memories are from winter. I love winter. And the crust of snow, you know, when it gets hard and really crunchy when you walk on it, and in the dark, it looks like it's all diamonds. The light shines and reflects off it. Well, we used to have the northern lights, and so you would get not only the light from uh, the moon or the stars, but you would get the northern lights dancing on those diamond snow things. It was so unbelievably beautiful, and and it. Um, it calls me all the time home, that, that sense of the cold and the beauty. So when we talk about celebrating um, Indigenous People Sunday and First Nations uh, Sundays, we're really talking about remembering remembering who we were and what we were like and who we can be again if it's allowed. In Canada, we didn't have wars except for with Louis Riel, who was from Saskatchewan. Buffy St. Marie, who you heard singing the song right before this, also from Saskatchewan like me. And she was adopted by people in um, the US and she didn't get to claim her heritage until much later in life. Um, what we are looking for as, as people is just to be able to be who we are and to honor who we are and not to lose sight of that to be able to include all of the bits of ourself, just like each one of you wants to include the bits of yourself, what your backgrounds are, what your grandmother was like, what your grandfather was like, where they came from, what influenced them, what helped them to grow and to be, and how it shaped you, how it's made you feel, That's what First Nations people do all the time. They're just, if there's an opportunity to sit and talk to somebody 
who's grown up on a reserve or grown up with the teachings, talk to them. See who they are and where they've come from and what they can offer you. Be open to offering them a part of you as well. In all things, when you are taking, you give, you honor, you respect. I would love to be able to give people the opportunity to experience every culture and to hold every culture as sacred, every person as sacred. I don't think we're all meant to be the same. I don't think we're meant to be alike in any way. In my culture, people like me, lesbians, were called two-spirited people. It's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. You're considered a spiritual leader and because you can walk in both people's shoes. It's probably the closest to our trans um, community. So what I'd like to share with you as we end is just um, what I would call a prayer for our world. Uh, and it's something I wrote. And so it's, <clears throat> Great Spirit, we give you thanks. You have given into our care this earth, the lakes and rivers, the trees and flowers, the sand and cactus, the snow and rain, the warmth of the sun, the vastness of the night sky, all of these into our care. We have used this er the earth and spent her resources we have not cared for her creatures. We have been a people of consumption. In a world that needs tender nurturing, help us to be a changed people, tending the earth, repairing the damage, treating each gift of air, of plants, of water, with the care they deserve, that we deserve. Help us to treasure each running brook, each glass of water, each step on the earth to treat as sacred. When we see a bird winging its way across the sky, may they echo our thoughts, our prayers, our cares to you as they take flight. As we feel each gentle breeze or the bite of winter days, may we treat them as the great spirits caress. Help us to be your caretakers with awe and with reverence, faithfully tending the earth that was given us. May we value each tribe, each nation, each way. May all our colors be known as sacred. May all our genders be a celebration that these be our promises to you, O one who creates with love. To live more simply, value more deeply this precious gift of our earth. To honor and protect the two-legged, the people of the world, your tender creation, and to treat each one with kindness and love. To take time to listen for your voice on the wind in the heat of the sun, in the falling rain, and the biting cold of snow. We listen with our whole being and respond to your call. Awanestica. We are going heaven knows where we are going, but we know we will. We are going.
join me in reciting the words to extinguish our chalice. The words are in the chat box. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. Thank you for having me, and these are our closing words. May the Great Spirit remind us that the pursuit of justice is the foundation of peace. May we earnestly seek justice in our relationships with others. May we work and pray for healing, for justice, for reconciliation between Indigenous and non-Indigenous peoples of the world, and may our lives reflect a deep and abiding respect for one another and the land that supports us all. Awanestika. Our virtual worship has ended, but our connection to one another and the earth endures. Go blessed to be a blessing for others.